There's an emergency going on right now. People are refusing to listen to the word of the Lord. When a brother comes and delivers the word of the Lord, they reject it and they attempt to throw that brother down. Even though this brother is speaking, quoting from the word of God, they say he doesn't believe the word of God. Even though this brother quotes from the Bible, they say he doesn't believe the Bible. How can you come to a conclusion that someone doesn't believe the Bible is true when they are basing their arguments to you on the Word of God? Are you really rejecting that brother or are you rejecting the Word of God? I'm asking you again. When someone speaks for the Word and you reject him, do you reject the messenger or do you reject the king who sent him? I'm going to quote exactly what some brother said. This is not the truth, my friend. This is a book with truth written into it. God is the truth, and every man is a liar. The second part is from Romans chapter 3, verse 4. The first part, I agree with. The Bible is not the truth. God is the truth. This is a book with the truth written into it. God is not constrained between this cover and this cover. It is a right thing to come against a religious doctrine. <clears throat> now let me just read this right here. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory, and before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Notice I read the King James Version. Some people will come against me saying that I'm liberal. But that's incorrect. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. These are things that they did. The life of a Christian is filled with good works. It is the heart of Christ that dwells within us that compels us to feed the Word to the sheep, that compels us to help the less fortunate, that compels us to defend the fatherless, to win. There's a great conviction and a desire to win and a desire just to play the game. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Prison ministry? There's a lot of time in there. you got to prepare. God bless everybody who has a prison ministry. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee? hungry and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Truly I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when we saw thee hungry, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee. When? When saw we this? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to the one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into everlasting life. So there it is. People who behaved, who performed good works, were accepted. People who, well, let me not just say people who performed good works. People who answered in response to the heart of God. People who were truly filled with the righteous living spirit of, of, of the Holy Lord were compelled by that spirit to help the sick, to help the less fortunate, to feed the hungry, to visit those who were in prison and lonely. That's the heart of God. 
That's the measure. I think most people don't understand this. That a life truly dedicated to the Lord is easy to see. It's filled with love. It's filled with compassion for His brothers. It's filled with mercy, the attributes of God. And it's filled with a hatred for the things that do not belong to God. It's easy to see. A life dedicated to Jesus is easy to see. Pray, don't be defeated.